Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the TWSN YouTube channel. My name is Nader Asaf, and today I'm joined by my co-hosts, Ted and Evan. And today we're going to be breaking down arguably the second biggest fight on this amazing UFC 281 main card, Michael Chandler versus Dustin Poirier, and essentially a title eliminator. So before I get into it, Ted, what are your thoughts? First of all, I'm going to stop you there. I think winner has to fight Benny Dariush. Benny Dariush deserves a look. He's 100%. He's getting forgotten about, can't forget about it. Winner of this fight fights Benny Dariush, and it'll be Michael Chandler. Like it. We've seen Michael Chandler have his fun in the UFC. He had his fun fight with Gaethje. He had an awesome, amazing title opportunity against Charles Oliveira. We almost put him away, but it's cost him. It's cost him wins. Yeah, I'm sure he's gotten performance bonuses. I don't know off the top of my head, but it's definitely cost him his win bonuses. And he wants that title fight back. He's going to be on a second run in the UFC. This would get him right there. I think it would get him a number one contender fight right after it. And he's going to come in and he's going to fight how he needs to fight. And you guys might not love it. You guys might be a fan of Chandler because you've never seen him in Veltor and he came in and he knocked out Dan Hooker in five seconds. It's not going to be that. We're seeing a Dustin Poirier that clearly struggles with top pressure. And we're seeing a very, very good wrestler with good top pressure. And that's how this fight's going to play out. Because one, I think it's just gotten to a point where Chandler gets clipped in every fight and Dustin is going to clip him and, and the, the, the war is going to end right there. It's going to come out. It's going to look like Gaethje versus Chandler, but then he's going to get clipped and it's going to turn on and he's going to be on top of him for, I think, the last two rounds. I think he'll probably give up the first round and win the back to 29-28 Chandler. Lots of top control. I don't think he'll submit Dustin. I know a lot of people think Dustin has very bad submission defense, but he got submitted by Charles Oliveira and Khabib. Like, who did? Uh, so I don't think Chandler's going to submit him. I think he's just going to be a dog and stay on top for probably a good eight minutes of control time, something we haven't seen him do in the UFC, but he is very much capable of. Uh, Nader, I think you're down the same lines as me. What do you think? You know, I think that at a certain point, we have to stop and just look at this. Michael Chandler has had his fun, like you said, Ted. He came in from Bellator. He got the fans that he needed. He won a couple fun fights. He lost a couple fights. It happens. But now I think Michael Chandler is focused and he's ready to get an opportunity at the belt. And that's going to be have it's going to have to come at the cost of Dustin Poirier at a certain, you know, like back then. Everybody was like, oh, Michael Chandler is a little cornball. Everybody hated him because of his inspirational speeches and motivation. Everybody thought it was really corny. And now everybody loves him because he's entertaining. And not only is he entertaining, but he's a good fighter. This dude belongs in the top five of the division. And Lightweight's one of the biggest shark tanks in the UFC. I think that Michael Chandler is at a point in his career where he's on the come up. You know, a knockout against Tony Chandler, whether he's washed or not. One of the best knockouts I've ever seen. Certainly the best like upkick knockout. That was disgusting. I my jaw was dropped. I couldn't speak for five minutes. Just sitting here, absolutely, you know, I it's still unbelievable to this point. And uh, and now he's gonna face a guy in Dustin Poirier who's coming off a title loss. And we're just confused. Like it's gonna take probably two, three more fights before Dustin is even considered for another title opportunity. Uh, you know, the whole 25 minutes to eternity thing with him. And everybody was hyping him up, saying he's much better than Charles. Charles submitted him, took everything that Dustin had, and went out and submitted him. I just think that these two guys are at different points of their careers. And people forget that Chandler, as much as he can strike, he can wrestle. People forget that he's a really good wrestler. And Dustin, he can get taken down. I know everybody loves to rave over you know, Dustin's Brazilian jiu-jitsu and that he's a really well-rounded fighter. Well, Mike's a better grappler than he is. I think that's pretty obvious. So I think that Chandler is going to win this one. I have it by decision. I don't think he finishes him, but I think it's going to be, you know, another three round fight of the year contender. But Evan, uh, what do you think closing us out? Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to have to go back and lone wolf this one. I feel like I've lone wolfed a couple of these fights before. Um, I'm, I'm going with the favor here. I'm going with Dustin Poirier. Um, I, I would love, I'm a Michael Chandler fan myself and I would love to see Michael Chandler come out and stay focused, have this second run you guys are talking about. Um, I think Michael Chandler is addicted to this barn burner type of fight. And I don't think that fares well for him here. I think Dustin Poirier is a better striker than him coming into this. Um, you know, 
One thing I I went back and watched his fight against Oliveira, um, and he looked good to start. Obviously, he clipped Oliveira in that uh, in the start of that fight, but in the second round, I thought Michael Chandler looked a little gassed. Um, and I don't think you're gonna if you're gonna look gassed that early in a fight against Dustin Poirier, I don't think it's gonna go well for you. Um, I actually, when you were for Ted, when you said that uh, Poirier would get win the first round and then Chandler would take the back too, I think if this fight goes to a decision, I actually like chandler to win the first round um because he'll have that if he goes out and takes him down he is a better grappler i agree with what nader said but um i think poirier is going to be able to keep this fight on the feet for the back half of this fight and uh make this a barn burner and win this by uh a 29 28 decision yeah ted um, who do you guys think hits harder uh that's uh I was just about to like ask one him. punch, one punch power. I think Chandler. Is hard. One punch power. Chandler, I think one punch power. Chandler might be the hardest hitter at 155. Do you guys see the the like laundry list of supplements he swallows a day? He puts it on Instagram. It's <laughs> he definitely has like one of those like Monday, the most TJ Dillashaw looking thing. I have. like Usada has to live next to him. Oh but, yeah. Um, yeah. I, I just don't think it'll be that. Like, I think people are going to write this up, and they're both going to promo it to be that. And I just think Chandler – like, here's the thing. The CUF – if he loses this fight, the whole C at the top thing is done. If he loses this fight, there's no getting back to a title shot at 155. There's too many people. There's too many people that haven't lost three fights in their first, what, five UFC? Like, as fun as he's been, you can't go – what two and three or one i don't even it's it, it wouldn't be a good record it would be bad and you just can't yeah it'd be two and three he'd be two and three i think you just can't do that and get to a title fight at 155 with charles is still there i already brought up benny dariush if poirier gets a win he's right back there gaichi is still out there Fazeev, you got demir on the come up you There's got no Demir's. way that, if you don't win this fight we're never seeing you at the top buddy it's yeah and also, I wanted to touch base on something that Eddie Alvarez said a couple years ago. Um, the way that Dustin wins fights is through a flurry of shots. He'll just empty his gas tank on about 15 to 45 seconds of nonstop action. We saw it against Eddie himself. We saw it against Connor and their second fight. He just likes to empty his gas tank out. He doesn't necessarily have that one-punch power that a guy like Chandler has. And I think that you know Chandler, he comes from a good camp, You know, American top team. Is one of, oh, sorry, not American, Sanford. Sanford MMA. You know, Henry Hooft, one of the smartest coaches ever, a great kickboxer. They're going to be planning for that. I think that Chandler is a smart fighter. He's experienced and he knows what it takes to beat a guy like Poirier because we all know what Poirier's game is. It's not like he's fighting an up and comer that's young. Nobody really knows what he can bring. He's not fighting some freak of nature like Jalen Turner. I think that Chandler, you know, frankly, he's getting a bit disrespected in this fight because although the lines are close, I think that too many people are writing him off without proper reasoning you know at least like evan himself evan you had some pretty good reasoning i almost i got you know i started to lean a bit towards poirier with what i was hearing you say but i think that a lot of people are doubting chandler in general i like that you brought up henry hoop because henry hoop is actually a guy that he has some of the better game plans uh for his fighters i feel like like he really he whether it's a fun fight or not he exploits the opponent's biggest weakness Birds versus wonder boy uh, that's exactly what I was going to. He apologized. He walked up to Wonder Boy and he goes, "Buddy, we know you know that's how we have to fight you." Like he he knows what he knows. Like Gilbert Burns can come out there and swing and bang, but the easiest path to victory was to take him down and be on top of him. I think he's going to know the easiest path to victory with Dustin Poirier is to be on top of him, and that's what we're going to see. That's all I got to say. Anything else from you, boys? Before we close this out, one thing I wanted to add on just to. Uh, kind of cement this in a little bit um with the with when michael chandler fought tony ferguson before he landed that up kick we were watching a fight where we said wow tony ferguson might not be fully washed and then he got knocked out and then he fought nate diaz and he didn't look good against nate diaz we now know that tony ferguson is pretty much washed uh if we're gonna if tony ferguson put that good of a fight against michael Ch michael chandler Dustin Poirier, I think, is worlds above him, and I think uh, that Dustin Poirier is going to finish him if uh, if but that's what it comes down to. But I am going to stick with my decision pick here. That's a good I point. I think that's a very, very valid point. 
I was going to bring up that fight because I had mentioned I think Dustin will clip him in the first round and that will turn Chandler on. I think that's what we saw in the Tony fight is he went out to have fun with a legend. And regardless of Wash or not, you might be a little starstruck across the octagon from Tony Ferguson. And he went out and had fun. He got caught with a punch and it turned him on. He came out in the second round and looked like a different fighter. It's you shouldn't have a competitive first round with Tony Ferguson. You're right, but I don't think that weighs too much on Chandler's skill set. I I think, but I again I think he'll get clipped in the first round. He just gets clipped. It, he, he just does. Yeah, for sure. And you know, going back, you know, forgetting all the predictions and things of that nature. This is going to be a fun fight, regardless of the winner. This is going to be entertaining. This UFC 281 card. Definitely screams, you know, card of the year contender. This, this, and uh, next month's card in 282, we're, they're treating us right after some bad fight nights. So, in general, we're excited. And um, stay tuned. In a couple of days, we're going to be releasing our last 281 prediction where we're going to be breaking down the second to last fight of the night in Carla Esparza versus Wiley Zhang. Stay tuned for that. Thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to subscribe to the TWSN YouTube channel. And also make sure you go get your free money and subscribe to our TWSN Patreon. We're making people money like crazy. We've said it before. There's no reason not to. Appreciate you guys. And make sure to tune in.